Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. We're not done with layout quite yet. Next, we're going to talk about new layout controls that were introduced with the Universal Windows Platform API. Now, you might wonder why are there new layout controls? What has changed from previous APIs that we use to build apps for the Windows 8.1 Store and the Windows Phone 8.1 Store? Well, there's two reasons why we need new layout controls. First of all, to help us build apps that look like they belong in Windows 10. Talk about that more in just a moment. And then secondly, to help us build applications that adapt to different device family and screen sizes. And we'll talk about that in an upcoming lesson. So as you can see, I have loaded up in my uh, recording area here one of the stock applications that come pre-installed with Windows 10. The money app. Now there's also a news of weather sports and, and a few others. Uh, but they all kind of share some similar characteristics that um, that aesthetic and functionality that uh, really uh, identify themselves as Windows 10 applications uniquely. So I wanted to point those out, those features out, and then I want to show eventually over the course of the next few lessons how we can duplicate this ourselves with the built-in controls that are now available in uh, the Universal Windows platform. So when I talk about the Chrome, I'm talking about the top area and the leftmost area here that provides navigation and other services to your application. And so this style of navigation, the style of application is known as hamburger navigation. And uh, the hamburger is a term that's used to, uh, to indicate that there's an icon with three vertical lines uh, or horizontal lines uh, stacked vertically. And when you click that button in the upper left hand corner, it will show a split panel that will display uh, navigation to the various areas or functionality of your application. So in this case, we can see that in expanded mode, both an icon and a title for the given area of our application. And we can navigate around uh, using the expanded view or the compacted view. When we're in compacted mode, you can only see the icons uh, on the left, but you can always see the item that was selected is kind of highlighted in one of the primary uh, accent colors for the application. All right, next up, if you look over here at the very top of the application, you'll see that there's kind of this bar of functionality. Now this might change over time, but there are some constants that are in almost every app, like a search bar in the upper right hand corner. In this case, we're searching for uh, the, current, um, the current stock price for a given company. Uh, we can search for it here. Also then to the left of that, uh, docked over to the left hand side, is the title of the, uh, of the area that we're currently in. And then to the left of that, a navigation button that allows us to go back through the navigation history to get back to the home page. There's also some other features of these applications like uh, the card layout, card based layout, where you have all these little panels of cards uh, that will dynamically kind of resize themselves and then depending on the viewport, the size of the, uh, the window that uh, has been uh, resized by the user, they'll either shift down, wrap down to the next line or they'll expand and contract. All right, we'll talk about that later on and there are controls that'll help us achieve that effect as well. All right, so let me shut this down and the next thing that I wanna do is talk about two layout controls that'll help us achieve the effect that we saw there. The relative panel is the first one, and it's a control, a layout container that is useful for creating user interfaces that don't have a clear linear pattern. And when I say linear pattern, what I mean is that it's for layouts that are not fundamentally stacked or wrapped like that card layout or even tabular like in a grid. So these are layouts that you may not find as easy to reproduce using a stack panel or a grid. Uh, now certainly what we saw in the Windows 10 application, we probably could achieve that using a stack panel and grid combination. However, I think you're gonna find that these two new controls will help you achieve this a little bit more elegantly. So uh, the, the relative panel basically defines an area where you can position and align child objects, so other controls, either in relation to each other or in relation to the parent panel itself. 
And there's three basic categories of attached properties that allow you to position the controls inside of the panel. There are panel alignment relationships. So these are attached properties like align top of my control with the panel. So align top with panel, align the left with panel, and so on. Then there are sibling alignment relationships. So align top with, and then you give the name of the control that you want to be aligned top with. There's another control here, and you say, I want my top to be aligned with the same top as this sibling. And then there's sibling positional relationships, the third, the third type of attached property. And so this is, I want to be above my sibling. I want to be below my sibling. I want to be to the right and to the left of my sibling, okay? So what you see here, I've got uh, the beginnings of an application. You can pause the video and catch up with me. Uh, it's just called relative panel example. And what I'm going to do is add in some code here and to really exercise the, uh, the uh, relative panel. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some uh, row definitions here so we can do some interesting things. And what I want to do is put a relative panel uh, in the first row, or actually the second row, grid row one, all right? And also I'm gonna set a minimum height. So no matter what, I never want the height of this relative panel to be less than 300 pixels, all right? And now I'm gonna start adding a number of rectangles. In fact, I'm going to add this first rectangle. It's just gonna be a red rectangle, but notice I've set the relative panel dot align right with panel equal true. Now let me bring this down a little bit so you can kind of see this in effect. So here again, we've got three rows, one row, two rows, three rows in our grid. And in the middle row, I have my relative panel. And I said uh, for this rectangle, I want it, the right side to be aligned with the panel. So I set that, that attach property equal to true. And you can see now that red box aligns itself to the right hand side. Uh, we can then do something in relation to that sibling, adding another rectangle, a blue rectangle that says, hey, I want to be to the left of that red rectangle. And you can see that no matter what, even as we resize this application, uh, here, let's run the app. All right, even as we resize the application, the blue rectangle will always be to the left of the red rectangle. See that? And the red rectangle will always be aligned to the right-hand side. Very neat. All right, next up, what I wanna do is show that we can also set multiple attached properties. Here I'm gonna paste in a green rectangle and I've set the aligned vertical center width equal to the red rectangle. So now the center of the red rectangle and the center of the green rectangle will be the same. Furthermore, I want to align the horizontal center with the panel. So show me where the center is of the, uh, uh, of the horizontal size of the app and I want to be right there in the middle. So now let's see what effect that achieves. We'll see how running the app with different screen sizes or by resizing the app, we're always gonna have that green rectangle with its center aligned vertically to the red rectangle and its horizontal uh, alignment center to the center of the application. Cool. And just to kind of speed up this process, I'm gonna paste in two more here at the same time, a yellow and a purple rectangle to look at the properties there. So let's uh, view the yellow rectangle, you can see that we set the minimum width to 50 and the minimum height to 50. And why this is important is because we want to align the bottom of our rectangle with the bottom of the panel, and we want to align the top with the purple rectangle. And so the purple rectangle is above it, uh, and it's defined here where we're setting the uh, we want it to be positioned below the red rectangle. We want it to be uh, the right of it aligned with the right of the re red rectangle. And we want the left aligned with the green rectangle. So now we're, we're going to, as we reposition, the actual size of the control will change. So let's go ahead and run it. In both these cases, you'll see that by resizing, and we will get a 
larger, whether in width or height, a larger uh, rectangle. Okay, you see that, how the yellow rectangle grows and how the purple rectangle grows, okay? So this is why you can do some interesting positional things with the relative panel, because you can set things relative to other controls or relative to the panel itself, and things can automatically resize themselves. All right, so, so what to all this? Why is this important? Well, the reason is because, and let me just save this, and let's take a look at another project that I currently have open and this will be the search bar. So relative panel search bar, you can load it up. Uh, it's available uh, wherever you downloaded the code or the, the, uh, the video for this, uh, for this lesson. And we see the beginnings of a Windows 10 application where we have a search bar over here on the right hand side. And we gotta clean it up some, it doesn't look finished yet, but you can see how no matter what, over on the left hand side, or the right hand side rather, we have it always docked to the right and we have the title to the left. Furthermore, I wanted to show that we can create a little status bar that's always docked to the bottom here. Furthermore, the uh, depending on the information, uh, it's either aligned to the left, aligned to the right, or aligned center. So let's see how we achieve this effect in our XAML. Let's open up our main page.xaml and then get rid of this output window. All right, so we have three rows. Uh, the top and the bottom rows are auto, so just take up enough room, just what you need, and then the middle area will be uh, star sizing, and so we didn't do anything in there. So the first item that we created was a relative panel that sat in that top row. And you can see that we have that button and that text box. The search button will be aligned right with the panel, so it's on the rightmost side, and then, we say to the search text box, align yourself with the left of that search button so that you'll always be to the left of that search button no matter what. And we do the same thing with the, uh, the text itself that's next to it that has the word search. It's just a text block and it has its left position to the left of the search text box. Then you can see that the other text block is just aligned to the left hand side with, because we didn't tell it relative of anything. It just defaults to the, uh, to the upper left-hand corner. All right, next up, uh, you can see that we have at the very bottom here that status bar. And I used an object called a border. And a border just creates a little layout control that provides us the ability to style the background color and the stroke around that background color. So we're just putting our relative panel inside of this border and the border all it does is going to give us some color and then we're going to do our work inside of the stack panel itself. And so this, there's three sections of that stack to that relative panel. The relative panel uh, on the left hand side will just contain the number of items like maybe items that need to be addressed and so it uses all the positional attached uh, properties that you would expect align left with panel and then the next item the next text block uh, align yourself to the right of that first text block so that's the left hand side the right hand side works the same way except uh, to the opposite and then the third case i actually create a stack panel because uh if you were to set one of the align horizontal center with panel, if you were to set one of the text blocks equal uh, with that setting, then it will be in the absolute center. And anything else that you need to the left of it or to the right of it would then be off center and it wouldn't look quite right. So you put them all in a stack panel and you can make sure that the stack panel is centered no matter what its width is. And then you can put whatever you want inside of there and know that it's going to always be centered. All right. So the last thing that I would say about the relative panel is that uh, you could potentially get yourself in a little trouble uh, by creating, you know, a circular reference. I want you to the left of you, uh, number one to the left of number two, number three to the left of number two, number four to the left of number three, number one to the left of number four. Okay, uh, so obviously uh, you can set multiple relationships that target the same edge of the element. Uh, and when you do that, you might have conflicting relationships in your layout as a result. 
So whenever this happens, there's actually an order of events, just like whenever you are in a, working in a math problem or even in code, that parentheses can dictate the, uh, the order of operation. There is an order of operation with how these relationships are deciphered in this order. So first, uh, priority will be panel alignment, so align me to the left or the right of the panel. Then the second one will be sibling alignment relationships. So put me to the with align me to, with the top of this control, align me with the left of that control. And then the third and the lowest priority would be sibling positional relationships. Set me above this control, below this control, to the left of this control. Okay. Uh, so at any rate, we're going to utilize the relative panel several times in the remainder of the series. It's a valuable tool to elegantly, simply align items relative of either the panel or other controls on our form. And we'll need that when building Windows 10 apps. All right, let's continue on uh, and talk about the other layout control that's new to the Universal Windows Platform API. We'll see you there. Thanks.